We acknowledge that we meet on the lands of the Wurundjeri people, and we pay our respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. Welcome to church. Wherever you are, whenever you are watching this, we give you a very warm welcome. Please join us in singing our hymns and praying our prayers, for we are the church. Whether we are together or separated by distance, we are united in purpose, the purpose of worshipping God. Jesus said, anyone who welcomes you, welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, help us to confess our sin. Grant us the courage to examine ourselves candidly. Bring to mind the thoughts and the deeds and words of this day, which have caused your son to flinch with pain. Make us aware of any falseness in us. Help us uncover the hidden motives which drive us and recognise and distort the images we have of your love. Have mercy on us, we are weak often misunderstanding and failing to listen to your spirit within. We confess this and our great need of your love. Confident in your commitment to us, we gladly share our frailty with you, our Redeemer, our refuge and strength. Amen. reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 10 verse 32 to 40. Whoever acknowledges me before others I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. 
But whoever disowned me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against a mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives a cold cup of water to any of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Selected verses from John, the 14th chapter. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may also be. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, there giveth thing unto a thing. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Announcements today are after service. At noon, we have Coffee Chat and Junior Church. Um, Sean and Bubba will be at Coffee Chat and I will be turning on Junior Church for 30 minutes, right at noon. We've got a Welsh service at 2.30 and that will be followed by Te Bach at 3.30. And then there's a Lutheran service at 5 p.m. And personally, I feel like maybe cocktails at six sounds like a good idea, but uh, let me know. We have tea on Tuesday at four o'clock and Bible study on Wednesday. Um, we are finishing up the book of Esther and we will be moving into Proverbs uh, in July. Thursday is a Vespers service and I'll be taking that. And then next Sunday we have an 11 a.m. communion service with Sean. In July, we will not be having a Facebook Live service because we have a anniversary service instead. And we're going to explore uh, alternatives to Facebook Live. We're not sure what that will look like yet, but we've got options. Zoom, drive in, we don't know. But we're gonna try something other than Facebook Live. Um, we had some audio problems and we're gonna try to address that. I don't have anything else for announcements, we are still closed. Please, please know that we would love to be open and worshiping together, but we need to continue like this for everyone's safety. So we love you enough that we don't want you to get sick. Before our prayers, we will have a time of silence to remember those who need our prayers and those whom we wish to pray for.
Lord God, you created all equal, all in your image and likeness. May our hands be your hands to bring relief to the poor, the hungry, the needy. May our ears be your ears to hear the groans of the oppressed. May our, may our healing be your healing to give food to the hungry, hope in despair, to bring freedom to the captives and all those enslaved. May we in partnership with all creation work together to bring about God's kingdom of justice and peace. Amen. Let us pray as our Saviour has taught us in the language of our heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. to be rewarded for our efforts. Gold stars on our pictures that we painted as children. Praise from our parents or teachers as we get older. Money as payment for our expenditure of time and talent as we do our work. Perhaps being recognized publicly with a big plaque or a round of applause for community service or a watch on retirement or a clock to go on the mantelpiece. 
A pat on the shoulder from our boss when we do a, a good job, or maybe in these COVID times, a wave in our general direction. We all appreciate recognition and we like benefits for our actions. It's human nature to do so. We want to feel wanted. We like to be rewarded. And so we turn to this passage at the end of chapter 10 of Matthew's Gospel. Jesus promising a reward for those who welcome prophets and righteous people to the community. And for those who offer small kindnesses to the vulnerable in their midst, they are given rewards beyond what they seem to deserve. Hospitality to those in need is an important thing, says Jesus. And so if we welcome people and give the needy a drink, according to this passage, what should we expect? What will our reward be? Well, to understand that better, we need to go back to a parable. We need to look at Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 to 39. Listen to another story. A man who owned some land planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it. He dug a pit for a wine press in it. He also built a lookout tower. He rented the vineyard out to some farmers. Then he moved to another place. When harvest time approached, he sent his slaves to the renters. He told the slaves to collect his share of the fruit. But the renters grabbed his slaves. They beat one of them. They killed another. They threw stones at the third to kill him. Then the man sent other slaves to the renters. He sent more than he did the first time, but the renters treated them in the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But the renters saw the son coming. They said to one another, this is the one who will receive all the owner's property someday. Come, let's kill him. Then everything will be ours. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard. Then they killed him. We don't need to worry what happens to the nasty people here. We can go ahead and read the rest of the story in your own time. What we need to see here is the Jewish idea of shaliach. Ah, yes, shaliach, I hear you say. <laughs> I understand it all now. Well, I'm glad you do, because I didn't. It took me quite a time to understand the idea of shaliach. I looked it up, and basically it is that a man's duly authorized messenger is as the man himself. In other words, when the son goes to the renters of the vineyard, he goes with all the authority of his father, the owner. These men knew this, and so plotted to kill him and could take over the, in the vineyard. To put it another way and to make it more meaningful for this sermon and for us today, to accept the man sent from God is to accept God himself. Or in the case of the reading, to receive a disciple of Christ is to receive Christ himself. And to receive Christ himself is also to receive God. So to welcome a disciple, we're basically welcoming God. So those who receive the disciples, they also receive God and also receive the same benefits as the disciples receive. It's there in the reading. Just as the renters in the parable expected to receive the vineyard at the end, so we can expect a reward for our acceptance of disciples and our discipleship. To us who practice hospitality in all its forms, we welcome those sent from God and so receive the same blessings that they do. Some of those blessings we can see outlined in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 to 10. The Beatitudes. Do I need to go through them here today? I'm not going to because I haven't got the time, but read them. What we need to remember is that these rewards have both a present and a future dimension. So they happen now, but they also pay forward in the future. Yes, they apply right now, 
but they also apply to our lives in the kingdom of God that is to come. The poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, all participate in the present blessings of the divine presence. Comfort, wisdom, forgiveness. But these gifts also go on to the future of the kingdom, into the presence of God himself, and are not just valid for now. So as it says, participation in the kingdom of God is the reward of the righteous person. It's not always an immediate reward like a gold star or a round of applause. But those acts of righteousness we do become a part of the kingdom. The actions of welcome and kindness point us both the giver and the receiver towards God and make him seen and known a little bit more in the world around us. So when we receive those sent from God, we get this double reward. Firstly, we get that, I helped out, Buzz! That feeling of knowing we did something good for somebody else. Those kindness endorphins that get released when we help out and feel good about what we did and about ourselves. Be careful. They are addictive. Secondly, though, we get those future promises. For as we look for those, we must remember those three important words that we must look at whenever we look at Scripture. And those words are context, context, and of course, context. The context of this piece is that it comes directly after Jesus' promise that those who lose their life for his sake will find it. This passage is an answer to the question, what is our reward for risking the loss of our lives as we know them? For you, O Lord. Or as Simon Peter so pragmatically puts it, look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? This question and Jesus' answer shows up three times in more or less exactly the same wording in Matthew 19, Mark 10, and Luke 18. In Matthew 10, Jesus refers to the reward of the righteous. It appears to be a bountiful compensation for the sacrifices we have made in this life. One that has both a worldly and an eternal component. Yes, we get that right now buzz, but we're also promised a place in the kingdom of God. Heaven itself becomes our reward. In preparing for this sermon, I came across a piece of writing that outlined pretty much what I'm trying to get at in a series of different quotes. The author said, I became intrigued with this notion of intrinsic reward for kind and positive deeds. This idea of the right now buzz. And I began collecting a number of affirmations from a variety of historical and current figures. The most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. The fears are paper tigers. You can do anything you decide to do. You can act to change and control your life. And the procedure, the process, is its own reward. Amelia Earhart, American aviation pioneer. If people are good only because they fear punishment and hope for reward, then we are a sorry lot indeed. Albert Einstein, German-born theoretical physicist. The reward for work well done is the opportunity to do more. Jonas Salk, American medical researcher who discovered the first successful polio vaccine. Love seeks only one thing, the good of the one loved. It leaves all the other secondary effects to take care of themselves. Love, therefore, is its own reward. Thomas Merton, American Catholic writer. 
The highest reward for a person's toil is not what they get for it, but what they become by it. John Ruskin, British art critic, artist, social thinker and philanthropist. Happiness is a virtue, not a reward. Baruch Spinoza, Dutch philosopher. There are those who give with joy, and that joy is their reward. Khalil Gibran, Lebanese artist, poet and writer. To give without any reward or any notice has a special quality of its own. Anne Morrow Lindbergh, American author and aviator. John Dry, English poet laureate, said, love is love's reward. And William Bennett, the American po politician, the Secretary of Education, said, a kind and compassionate act is often its own reward. To live for results would be to sentence myself to continuous frustration. My only sure reward is my actions, and not from them. You Prather. Presbyterian minister. An act of goodness is of itself an act of happiness. No reward coming after the event can compare with the sweet reward that went with it. Morris Matienlink, Belgian playwright, poet and essayist, and awarded, awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. The author goes on, reading these quotes, I get the feeling that these people are not doing good things for others solely for the resulting pleasure of feeling good about what they've done and about themselves. They are talking about giving one's life away for some purpose beyond oneself. And that paradoxically results in gain. As Christians, we would call that the reward of the righteous. I liked that passage. It helps me to see clearly that the reading we read this morning is very relevant to us today, especially in these strange days of isolation. We are not alone and we have and still do welcome the strangers with messages from God. It may not be in public, but we're seeing people from all over the world coming to witness our, our sermons and our services. We are still extending those hands of hospitality wherever we are. We can get the buzz of helping right now, but also the knowledge of the peace of the coming kingdom of God. Even though we expect no reward for being the welcoming people of God, we are being showered with blessings now and have the promise of heaven to come. I've been thinking a lot about heaven recently. With the loss of my mother a couple of weeks ago, I've been thinking about what heaven is and what it means. No two authors seem to agree on the idea. There are streets of gold or vast fields of green, choirs of angels or peace and tranquility, crowds of people or the presence of God. The pictures are all very, very confusing. So I turn to what I know. That piece from John 14 that was read at my mother's funeral. That piece that holds out a hope for heaven yet doesn't describe what it'll be like. I love this piece for it is our promised reward. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So go. And do the good we can wherever we can and receive the blessings of God, that present reward of the righteous and remembering that all we do in this life, we are aiming for another reward, a mansion in heaven that God alone knows what it will be like. And I'm good with that thought.
Not some of us, but all of us. Not the good and the righteous, all of us. Lord, you invite us unconditionally. Lord, we come meeting you, meeting each other, accepting one another unconditionally. Lord, we go constant in prayer, constant in prayerful action, expressing your continuous invitation. Lord, we go loving, sharing, seeking, bringing, serving the world you love. Grass in half with yes, a grace to carry a day. A hundred thus at a spit land with a grichy off of our horn. He'd be. What am I doing? Announcements. John plays quiet music. John plays quiet music. The sermon proper, without interruptions from Sarah. 